Hey, welcome to the Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about using functions in C++. A function is basically just a little collection of code that performs a specific task. So a lot of times in C++, when you're writing a bunch of code out, you have code that's designed to do a certain thing. Right? So you might have like four or five lines of code that's supposed to do something. And a function is basically a container where you can put that code and then you can reuse it throughout your entire program. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can create a function in this tutorial. So down here in my program, you'll see I have this little block of code here. It says int main, there's an open and closed parentheses and then there's these open and closed curly brackets. This is actually a function. This is a little block of code and this block of code performs a specific task. And the purpose of this main function is it's the function that gets executed when we run our program. So um, any code that we put inside of this main function is gonna get executed when our program runs. I'm gonna show you guys how we can create another function. So up here above this main function, I'm gonna create another function. And the task that this function will be performing is it's gonna say hi to the user. So whenever we're creating a function in C++, we need to give uh, C++ a couple pieces of information. The first piece of information we need to give is called a return type. Now, whenever we create these functions, a lot of times the functions will go off, they'll perform a specific task, and then they'll return a value back to the caller. And we're actually gonna talk more about returns and return types in the next video. But for the purposes of this video, you can kind of just follow along. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put void here. And when we put void here, it basically means that this function is not going to return anything. So this is kind of like the most basic type of function. And after we put void, now we need to give this function a name. Remember, function is a block of code that performs a task. So generally, when we're naming a function, you're going to want to name it according to the task that it's performing or according to the purpose of the function. So I'm just going to call mine say hi because our function is going to say hi to the user. Now I'm going to make an open and closed parentheses. And after this, I'm going to make an open and closed curly bracket. Any code that I put inside of this open and closed curly bracket is going to be considered inside of the function. So inside of here, why don't we just say like C out and we'll just print out like hello user. And that's basically all we'll do. So this is a very simple function. I just have one line of code in here. I could have as many lines as I want. This is a simple function, but I could have, you know, a dozen lines or a hundred lines if I wanted to. You can put as many lines of code in the function as you want. Now, let's run our program and we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and run my program. And you'll see over here, nothing's getting printed out. So hello user isn't actually getting printed out when we run our program. Here's the problem. When we want to execute the code that's inside of these functions, in other words, when we want to execute a function, we have to do something called calling it. So if I want this code inside of here to be executed, I have to call the function. Now remember, the code inside this main function gets executed by default, right? So no matter what, this is going to get executed. So inside of here, I can call the say hi function. I can just type out say hi and I can type in open and close parentheses. And when I do this, when I type this out, this tells C++ that I want to execute all of the code that's inside of this say hi function. So when C++ sees this, it's going to jump up to this say hi function. It's going to execute all of the code inside of there, and then it's going to come back down. So let's go ahead and run our program and we'll see what happens. So you can see over here, now we're printing out hello user. And real quick, real quick, I just wanna show you guys the flow of these. So if I said like C out over here and I said top, and then I did the same thing over here and I said bottom. When I run my program, you'll see that we're printing out top, hello user, and then bottom. And actually this probably would have been better if I put new lines in there. But the point is that when this program executes, C++ is gonna execute this line of code it's going to see that we want to call the say hi function and it's actually going to leave this main function. It's going to jump up here to the say hi function. It'll execute all of the code inside of here. Then when it runs out of code to execute inside of the say hi function, it's going to jump back to the main function and execute this line. So that's basically like the flow of what's happening. So this is a very basic function, but we can make this more complex. And one thing you can do with these functions is you can actually give them information 
called parameters. So this say hi function, I could give this a piece of information and the say hi function could use that piece of information to you know, perform its task differently or better or whatever. So these are called parameters. And if I wanna specify that this say hi function should be given a piece of information, I can just come over here and specify what piece of information it should take. So in our case, instead of saying hello user, why don't we say hello, hello to someone specific? So up here I could say like string name. And now this function's going to accept one parameter, a name. And down here, instead of saying hello user, we can just say hello name. Now, whenever I call this say hi function now, because it's specifying that it needs to take a parameter, I need to pass it a parameter. I need to pass it a value. So in here, I can just pass it like Mike. And now it's gonna print out hello Mike because the value Mike is gonna get stored inside of this name variable. All right, let's go ahead and run our program. And now you'll see it's printing out hello Mike. So that's kind of cool. And you can take any piece of information as a parameter and you can also take multiple parameters. So why don't we specify another parameter like age? So now the caller is gonna have to pass in their name and their age. So now we can say hello name and we'll say like you are and then we'll just say how old they are. So we'll say like age. So now we're passing in two pieces of information inside of this function. And down here, when I call the function, I have to give it two pieces of information. So now I could just say like Mike, and let's say that I'm 60. And so now when we call this function, it's gonna be able to take in both of those pieces of information and use them to perform the task differently. And what's cool about these functions is I could call this as many times as I want. In other words, I can reuse all of the code that's up here. So I could come down here, I could copy this, and why don't we do this a bunch? So we'll say like, Tom is gonna be 45, and let's say Steve is gonna be 19. And so now, I'm actually gonna run this code three different times. And actually, over here, I'm just gonna put a end line so that it gets printed out on new lines. All right, let's run the program. And you'll see it says, hello, Mike, you're 60, Tom's 45, and Steve's 19. So functions are great because we can reuse the code that we write inside the function. So basically, like, I wrote this function one time, and I can reuse it as many times as I want inside my program. So anytime you have code that's gonna be reused a lot, that's a good candidate for a function. All right, so I wanna show you guys one more thing. You'll notice that I'm creating this function up here above my main function, right? But if I was to take this and move it down here, so for example, if I moved it below the main function, now when I run my program, we're gonna get an error. You can see we're getting a little red block here. This is the problem. When we create this function below the main function, it doesn't actually know about it. So like all this code up here is getting executed. So C++ is trying to execute the say hi function, but it has no idea like what that is because we created it down here. So what we can do is we can actually create what's called a function stub. So up here, we're basically just gonna write out the function's signature and we're gonna tell C++ about it. So if you guys remember, like if I created a variable, like if I created an int and we just called it num, I don't have to give this a value right away. I could then come down here and say like num is equal to four or something. This is basically what we're gonna do with this function. We're gonna essentially just declare the function and then somewhere else in our program, we can define it. So over here, I'm just gonna say void say hi and it needs a string name and it needs an int age. And so now when I create this little function stub up here or this function signature, I'm basically declaring the function and I can give it a value down here and now C++ is gonna be able to call it because it's gonna have some information about it. So when I run my program now, we're able to call it no problem. So that's kind of just how we could do that with functions. And really you can create as many functions as you want. In fact, a good program will have lots and lots and lots of functions. In the next tutorial, um, I'm gonna show you guys how we can actually get information back from functions using the return keyword. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. 
Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.